next on Real Stories of the Highway Patrol. No, I did not tear it down. Okay, settle down. A domestic dispute brings in the Indiana State Police. Oh! Virginia State Police go after a car that runs a roadblock. Arkansas State Police face a dangerous armed man with a hostage. These are the real stories of the Highway Patrol. Next, we ride with the men and women of the Indiana, Virginia, and Arkansas State Police and the Utah Highway Patrol. These are actual encounters, taped as they happen. First, to South Bend, as Indiana State Troopers are called in on a domestic dispute. Be en route with the county on a domestic. If it's the one I think, the guy just might go in on this one. If it's the same guy, I think I was here, oh, about two months ago, I think. How you doing? Didn't you move out of here once before a long time ago? Yeah. About two, she, three months ago? She invited me back. I just uh, what else? agreed to go out. What else you got? Uh, what else you got to go? Is that it? This and my other boot and my tools. That was in a boot. I don't know where she put my boot. What you do to my car? Get to, just tore it up. No, I did not yes, tear it up. Okay, settle down. I well, where, my where, boot back. Boot. Well, where's his other boot? So. Of my stuff, all of it. I know this is yeah. For wh how many times now? I know. Why do you keep letting him come back? Because he promises he'll do better, but he won't. Learning the lesson the hard way, aren't we? I know. Well, I want my other boot. Why don't you give him your his other boot so we I can? I threw it over there. He can go get it if he wants it. You yeah. come back, you go to jail. That's simple. I'm leaving. Do you have an attorney, or have you ever had a restraining order on him? Probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Contact the prosecutor's office. Get yourself a restraining order so that, uh, you know, if he comes back. Now, don't be inviting him back again. Well, you know, I remember the last time I was here. I know. You know, the thing to do is go down, get a restraining order, so if he comes back, so we know ifs, ands, or buts, he goes to jail, and we're done with it. You know, this is how many times is the, you know, between us and the county we've been here, right? Right. Where are you going to go, Steve? Mom and Dad's. Where's that at? Elkhart. How are you going to get there? Dad's on his way now. She knew that before she called you. You went an hour to tear your stuff. I didn't go in to tear your stuff up. I went in to get my stuff. Why don't you go wait for your dad down on the corner? Why don't you just leave that here? Well, I'm not leaving that for her. That's his problem right there. No, leaving it for her. Am I going to get arrested if I take it down there? No, i just leave it in the case. All right. Start drinking it, you'll go to jail for public intoxication, so Sorry. just leave it in the case. We've been here numerous times. I thought I remembered it. The gentleman's usually intoxicated. Uh, we've asked him to leave numerous times. Uh, she keeps inviting him back. It's a domestic type thing. They just can't get along. He get, has too much to drink, getting an argument, and then she wants him out of here. So hopefully this time will be the last time and we won't have to come back, I hope. What did he pull out? I don't know. Apparently the guy had popped her hood and, and popped off some of these uh, vacuum lines to the car so that it may not run. I think it will. We just got to decide which ones go to what here to, to make it run. Let's see if we can plug some of these back in there. Let's start up, see if it, uh, see if it runs. It should. He jerked some of the vacuum lines off. It should still run. just wanted to make sure it runs. I'll, as I leave, we'll go have a little chat with him. That he'd make sure that he understood what we said not to come back. Okay? All right. All right. At least it runs. It'll get you where you're going. He jerked some vacuum lines off her car. I think he wanted to see if he could make it so she couldn't leave. But a little quick mechanical 
know-how underneath the hood that we've acquired over the years of trying to get cars to run again. And uh, we got her back underway at runs. Just double checking with the mail party down the street here to make sure he understands that he's not supposed to go back. Go ahead. You had to put your hands under the hood of the car, didn't you? Huh? You got your dad coming for you? He's coming for my car. You're sure he's coming? Don't even think of going back from where you're at right here. Okay. Yeah, well, we're just double. We just double check because just told him we've dealt with you so I'll many times, him. Steve. That I'll tell him the same thing I told you. She goes out and she screws around on me, and I'm not supposed to get mad. But I get mad. She calls you. I'm removed, and then she gets one more night to go do it. Well, but it's always on a weekend. Well, if you look, back, you're removed because you don't live there. That's why. It's always on a no. I'm removed because I'm out of money. What do you keep giving her money for? I don't know now. I don't either. I thought I loved her. Love will do strange things, won't it? <laughs> hey, find a new girlfriend, find a new place to crash. The woman did not press charges or obtain a restraining order against her boyfriend. Indiana State Police have not been called back to the residence since this incident. Hey, you're wandering just a little bit in your lane line, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Are you sleepy or tired? You haven't been drinking, anything like that? No, no, I am getting a little bit tired. Are you? Where are you headed tonight? So, uh, we're headed to the road up in Bryce Canyon. But oh, do you? Stay the night up here with my grandparents. What do you do? I what events do you participate in? He's a bull rider. I'm, I'm Holy bull rider? <laughs> I wouldn't mind riding one of those things if they cut the horns off and make them nice and flat and blunt, but not when they got sharp horns. Do you have your registration card with you to place? Boy, you got a lot of stuff in there. Looks like it's about time for spring cleaning, doesn't it? Okay, you guys got a gun in here? Yeah, there's two Okay, you, do you have them loaded? Okay, we need to check, just make sure they're not loaded, okay? Sir, would you step out that side and uh, greet that trooper over there, please? And, sir, would you undo your seatbelt and step out this side, please? And before you get behind me, I need to make sure there's no weapons in your pockets, okay? You face me, please. Nothing in the shirt pocket? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Okay, you didn't tell me about the handgun underneath the seat, sir. This belongs to you, Tom. Yeah. Check this pocket, please. Yeah, should have some keys and maybe some change. Okay. Yes? Use we'll your wallet back, sir. I got a... You want to fix that? Yeah. Got what? Uh, Memorial Day weekend, I got a speed ticket. Okay. It's not paid. Where did you get the ticket at? Up uh, right out of Bryce Canyon. In Bryce Canyon. Okay, what I need you to do, sir, is I need you to step back just a little bit further. A little bit further. And then you just sit down on the ground right there, if you would, please. If you don't mind, if you're sitting, it kind of, I need you to sit clear down so I can kind of control you a little bit better, okay? Another shotgun. First one was empty. Why didn't you tell us about the handgun? I did when I got up. You only told me about the two shotguns behind the seat. Okay. Why are you carrying it loaded? Huh? Why are you carrying it loaded? It's not against the loading, Oh, boy. I'd be really surprised if that wasn't against the law in Nevada. He says he's got a permit, but I don't know exactly what that allows him to do in Nevada. Well, he still doesn't allow him to carry it loaded here. <laughs> in fact, this might be his wallet. Let me just give this to you. Well, they're prepared anyway. Ben? Oh, no. Well, you never know. That's true. A can of Copenhagen on ice. Sounds wonderful to me. <laughs> Open rest, on ice. Yeah, the rest of us bottles of Mountain Dew. Okay. Well, where are they going? They must have a trip to... They're on their way to the next rodeo. Need all the caffeine they can get to make it, huh? Cowboys. All right. I'll get back and start running. Up. I'm going to leave this stuff right here. I'm the donuts and the drink. He says that one, don't touch that, and that's a spit bottle. It's got Mountain Dew and... Which one? Spit in it. I this one here. I won't touch Why that. do you mix the Mountain Dew with the spit? Spit in there. You know, the tough part would be remembering, do you spit or drink? Ew. 
102 Lama Super Comanche 44 Magnum. Holy criminy. 44 Mag. He's got all six. In the holster and loaded up. Well, he's going to be shocked when he finds out how much the fine is, isn't he? He's got his choice, paying the fine or lose the gun, so I'm sure the gun's worth more than the fine. It's around $200. You know, what we ought to do is we ought to have him out here in the middle of the night, make a stop or two and let him approach and find out about a 44 mag. Find my 44 magnum yeah. fully loaded, huh? See, see how tight he puckers up. He said, I've, I've got a permit for it in Nevada. <laughs> but guess what? You're in Utah. Ready to get out of here? Okay, let me give you the, the good news and bad news. Okay, the good news is we're going to cut your friend some slack on that warrant he's got. Okay. He's got an unpaid ticket. I'll go talk to him about okay. that. Now, he could easily go to jail tonight, but we'll let you guys get on your way. That's the good news. The bad news is we will hold on to a pistol. You'll be cited for carrying a loaded weapon on you. You paid the citation. The judge will get in touch with us. We'll return your weapon. Okay, now I need to talk to your passenger for just a second. Sir? When will you pay that unpaid ticket? Uh, very short. Okay, how about this trip? Yeah. All right. All right. You guys take care. Be careful on your trip, all right? Thank you. Good luck on the rodeo tomorrow. Nevada law allows a loaded weapon to be carried in a vehicle. It is illegal in Utah. The suspect was cited for this infraction and released. The gun was confiscated. Next, a man runs a roadblock, and the Virginia State Police are after him. Coming up, a hostage situation puts the Arkansas State Police on full alert. Checking details almost every other right day, there, right or sometimes there, right there. daily. We get guns, we get narcotics, we get people running. Oh! oh. Get, in. get in, John. There he goes, right there, see? Hold on, man. Negative one pursuit still. A red Mazda, red Mazda, two occupants. We're at Fairfax and 21st, Fairfax and 21st Street, notify the city. Hold on, baby. We're on uh, Gordon and 20th, Gordon and 20th. They're getting ready to bail out. There was five of us involved. And the pursuit that led us through the city uh, streets of Richmond. And we apprehended the subject after probably two or three minutes being in the pursuit. It seems a lot longer when you're in the city. 972, you trying to call me, Nancy? We got some uh, crack out of the vehicle right now. How much was that? Number? Seven, seven, eight rocks? It's, uh, yeah, probably about, uh, eight ball. Looked like $50 rocks, probably. Oh, okay, more than that. Uh, probably $400. $400, well, maybe about seven, eight rocks. Go ahead, since, since you got that, go ahead and search the rest of the car, see if you got anything else in there. He was arrested for reckless driving, attempt to elude, possession with intent to distribute crack cocaine. There was no injuries involved in the pursuit from our end or their end. And everything turned out okay. We get them all the time up there. Very seldom do they get away from us that night. The suspect was charged with driving without a license and possession of cocaine with intent to distribute. Bail was set at $15,000. Next, from the files of the Arkansas State Police, the story of Corporal Jerry Roberts. The following dramatic event is reenacted as it really happened with actual Arkansas troopers portraying the troopers in our story. The holiday season sometimes brings loneliness and desperation as well as joy and hope. On a December morning, Arkansas State Police Corporal Jay Roberts and his passenger, Deputy Sheriff Ron Hughes, are on patrol. They have no idea what's in store for them. I wonder what the city's got. I don't know, didn't hear anything on the radio. 
At 10.15 that morning, Major Ron Stobaugh of the Russellville Police Department passes them in an unmarked car. He signals Roberts to follow him, aware that the trooper can't monitor his city radio frequency. Hughes and Roberts follow Stobaugh and Chief Herb Johnston to a law office, where they learn there's been a shooting. He's hurt bad. Roberts goes to help the victim. I'll take care of it. A young woman has been shot in the head. You got a pulse. Very faint. The wound is serious. Then news of another shooting comes in over Stobaugh's radio. Why don't y'all go on over there? We're going to have to wait here on the EMT. This girl's in bad shape. With paramedics on the scene, Roberts heads to the location where the gunman was spotted. On the way, the officers learned that the woman shot in the law office has died. Corporal Roberts arrives and senses immediate danger. Their backup has not yet arrived, but the situation demands immediate action. The man tells Roberts that another woman has been shot and the assailant is looking for other victims. Roberts acts quickly. In a combat situation, you develop tunnel vision and uh, struggle against tunnel vision to keep my peripheral vision working. Going corner to corner, securing a building, each corner you make is uh, you're in fear for your life. Don't shoot! In your mind, it's like you already kill these people, but then you stop yourself at the last moment before your trigger squeezes. Corporal Roberts locates the suspect, but it appears that he's holding a hostage. I've killed everybody today that I intend to kill. I want you to understand that. You were nice to me. You treated me well. I've done what I came to do. But I will only surrender to the police under my terms. Do you understand that? Just my terms. Roberts knows the suspect has killed once and could kill again. He has a clear line of fire. But the glass might be too thick to shoot through with accuracy. We'll return to the showdown with an armed killer. Corporal Jerry Roberts of the Arkansas State Police has been called in to help stop a gunman who has shot and killed at least one person and shot several others. The suspect has been located, but he is behind glass too thick to shoot through, and he is holding a hostage. We got a hostage. We have to surrender. The gunman has his hostage call police to say he wants to surrender. Corporal Roberts is not willing to trust the suspect. Do you understand that? Major Stobaugh of the Russellville Police Department attempts to gain entry into the glass cage. Chief Johnston tries to talk to the subject through the window. It's Chief of Police, open the door. Come on, give me that gun. The suspect does not respond. I said this is the Chief of Police. Open the door and bring me that gun. Besides the woman the suspect murdered at the law office, he also killed his entire family as they arrived to spend the Christmas holiday. He was convicted of multiple counts of murder, becoming Arkansas's most notorious mass murderer. The killer tried to waive his right to appeal, but went through the process anyway. He was executed three years later. Corporal Jerry Roberts returned to duty and is still on patrol with the Arkansas State Police. Accident report about a three-year-old killed when the car, driven by his father, rolled over and the child was ejected through the window. The youngster had been standing on the front seat next to his dad. When the highway patrol officer looked into the car, he found a child's safety seat lying in the rear. Protection available, but not used. That father will think about it for the rest of his life because his mistake took away the rest of his son's life.
From the men and women of the Highway Patrol and state police agencies of America, thank you for watching.